Hi, Bill from Polygon here. In this video, you'll learn how to use the modern bricks generator to create the perfect custom brick for your scenes. I'll give a brief overview of the different settings and show you how to get the final material into your 3D software. All the settings I'm going to show you will be the same regardless of where you're using it. You can open it in a Substance plugin if you're using 3ds Max, Maya or Cinema 4D. Or if you're using software that doesn't have a plugin like Blender, you can just use the generator in Substance Player, which is where I'm going to be demonstrating it. It's also worth noting that Substance Player is a free download. I'll be sure to include a link to it and uh, the relevant add-ons in the description below. I'll also include a link to the generator itself, which you can download from polygon.com. Okay, so the first category of settings we have here are some general settings. Most importantly, the resolution of the final textures. Now by default, this is set to 512, and this is so the viewport updates nice and fast while we're making alterations. We'll increase this number uh, when it's time to export, but for now I'm going to set it to 1024, as that still runs pretty nicely on my particular hardware setup. There is also a random seed value here, which will basically create a complete different version of the current material based on all the settings below. Next we have global parameters. From here we can choose our workflow, either metallic roughness or specular glossy. Now this is an important one to get right and it will depend on what application you're using. In Blender for example, it's best to go with the metallic roughness workflow as that is what the principal shader works best with. However, let's say you're using Corona Renderer, you'd be better off using the specular glossy workflow. Chances are you already know what one works best for your software, but if you don't, please feel free to contact us for advice on the subject. Now the rest of the controls in here relate to the general sizing and shape of the bricks. We have a slider for overall scale, a drop down to select the type of brick bond. These are based off real world bond types and, and, and will have a big impact on the look of your final material. We also have some sliders to change the width of the mortar as well as some uh, others to affect rotation and extrusion of the individual bricks. Okay, so the next category is where we can start to alter the overall look of the bricks. First up, we have surface, where you can pick from a number of surface types. Uh, we also have some controls for uh, the flash pattern, how burnt the bricks got while they were being heated. Uh, next, we have some settings to adjust the edges. With some minor adjustments here, you can get quite a different look to the edges of the bricks, giving them a more sort of industrial feel. In condition, we have a number of different controls, uh, though the most notable one is the ability to turn on and off the reclaimed button. Uh, this gives the bricks kind of a recycled look. Next, we can change the color of the bricks to pretty much anything we like, though I'd recommend to make sure you pick realistic colors based on, on reference images uh, if, you're, if you're aiming for photorealism. Finally, in the microsurface category, we can adjust the roughness, how shiny the bricks will look. Uh, you will likely want to keep this setting relatively high. Okay, after that we have some similar controls for mortar. We can adjust the uh, colour and the roughness levels for that separately. Now finish allows us to add a painted effect to these bricks. Uh, we can choose between various matte and glossy paint types, uh, as, as well as change the colour of the paint. We can even change the amount of coats that have been applied for, for a stronger effect. Finally, uh, we can add in some dirt effects from this section here. Uh, and yeah, that's a, that's a summary of all the controls within the modern brick generator. With all these settings, there is really a huge amount you can do to generate all sorts of different textures. Now I'm going to quickly cover exporting so you can take your finished materials and generate a PBR texture set to use in other applications. If you're using a plugin uh, directly in your application rather than Substance Player, you can ignore this part. Now here in these shader settings, we can adjust the normal format. Uh, depending on your render engine and software, uh, you may want to adjust these. I, I, I for example, use Blender uh, for most of my projects and for that you'd want OpenGL. So I'm going to set that now. Uh, we also have some controls for making overall adjustments to ambient occlusion strength and normal map intensity. Uh, I'll, I'll leave these where they are. Right, before we open up the export window, we need to head right back up to the top of the settings panel and set the resolution to what we want for our exported textures. I'm going to select uh, 4K or 4096 and then head over and click on the export as bitmap button. As you can see, this opens up a new window uh, and from here we can set up our export. By default, all these various texture types are available, but I'm going to disable a few and just export the base color, roughness, normal, and height textures, as they tend to work great in Blender. 
Next, let's head up to the file type. I tend to go with a .tiff file here uh, for the extra color depth. Um, and then the only thing left to do is set the export folder. Once everything's set up, simply hit export and your textures will be saved. That's it. From there, you can simply load them into your target application and you're good to go.